All right, I wanted to create another YouTube video after a question that came up in the uh, second class I taught this uh, today. The second class I taught today, there was a question about uh, a couple of homework problems, and um, one dealt with write the net ionic equation. And so I want to talk a little bit about general equations ionic and net ionic equation. So the problem that we did in class today was uh, if you have barium chloride and you react that with chromium sulfate What are the products and what is the net ionic reaction? So in order to solve this problem, you have to memorize the solubility table on page 139. Now there's a lot on to it. It's a table 4.1 and there's a lot on the table but really it's not as much to memorize as you think. So what you do is you memorize what is soluble in water. What ionic compounds, and I guess I should say that, ionic compounds that are soluble in water. So, first of all, anything out of group one is water soluble. Any ionic compound with a group one metal, let's do it that way, group one metal ion is water soluble. For example, potassium nitrate. Potassium is a group one metal, it's a positive one ion, and the nitrate's a polyatomic ion with a negative one charge. So what that means is, is that if I take solid potassium nitrate, and I add it to water, it dissolves into potassium ions, and we say aqueous, which means dissolved in water, and nitrate ions, which is dissolved in water. Oops. All right. So any group one metal ion compound is water soluble. Other compounds that are always water soluble, any compound that contains the ammonium ion or the nitrate ion. So if I have a compound like calcium nitrate, that substance will dissolve in water and actually it's in the form of uh, calcium ions plus two nitrate ions. And again, to symbolize that it dissolves in water, we put an AQ, aqueous, which that's what it means, dissolves in water. All right. The next thing we memorize is that all chlorides, bromides, and iodides are water soluble, but there are exceptions to the rule. And that's what you really memorize is what are the exceptions. If the chloride ion or bromide ion or iodide ion is bonded to the metal ion silver, mercury 1, or lead 2, then that particular compound is not water soluble. So that means if you mix lead ions, lead two ions with chloride ions, you will form a precipitate lead two chloride. And the way we symbolize that precipitate is we put a solid symbol here. So to make this equation balance, we put a two here. Now these two ions by themselves are water soluble. So it's like you have a test tube that has lead ions and a test tube that has chloride ions. And when they combine together, they form the precipitate lead to chloride. 
The last of what's mostly soluble is sulfates. Sulfates are almost always water soluble, but there are exceptions. And these are not hard to remember either. It's again silver, just like the chloride. And then it's a group of ions that come out of um, group two. Calcium, two positive. Strontium, two positive. Barium, two positive. Again, all metals out of group two. And then the mercury... One again, which we saw up here with the um, chloride and the lead two positive again that we saw up there with the chloride. So what you do here is you memorize the exceptions and then assume all other chlorides and sulfates are water soluble. So you go, well, why do I need to know that? Well, let's look at this equation up here. We're combining barium chloride with chromium 2 sulfate and you have to evaluate these compounds do they dissolve in water well we said all chlorides dissolve in water except these except when combined with either silver mercury 1 or lead 2 so what that means is that in reality when I have a test tube full of barium chloride and water the barium chloride is dissolved in the water, and this is what in reality I have. Barium ions in the water and chloride ions in the water. And the AQ means dissolved in water. The chromium sulfate. Well, all sulfates are water soluble except the exception of these six. Chromium is not one of them. So the chromium dissolves in water as a two positive ion. And the sulfate ion is a polyatomic ion with a negative 2. So we put an aqueous and an aqueous here to say that these are dissolved in water. All right, so what are my products that are going to be formed? Well, the barium ion is not going to react with the chromium, chromium ion because like charges repel each other. So if barium is going to form something new, it's going to be this compound barium sulfate all right so up here in the general equation that's what I'm gonna write barium sulfate and you go how do you know what the chemical formula is well you know barium's a two positive ion and sulfate's a negative two ion so they would combine one to one and then the other product would be chromium chloride chromium two chloride so What we need to do is evaluate these two substances or compounds to see if they're water soluble or not. So we look at the sulfate and we see that barium sulfate is not water soluble. So we put a solid here to say, hey, it's a precipitate. It's a solid. It's not going to stay in solution. But the chloride, chromium 2 chloride, all chlorides are water soluble with the exception of silver, mercury, or lead. So this one is water soluble, so we put an aqueous with that. So down on the second line, you keep the barium sulfate together and you put a solid to say that's a precipitate coming out of the reaction. But the chromium, because it does dissolve in water, you show that as a chromium 2 positive ion aqueous and then two chloride ions aqueous because it does dissolve in water. This equation really shows us what's present in the solution and it's called the ionic equation. The ionic equation gives you more detail. It really shows you what, what ions are in solution in your test tubes. Now the advantage of the general equation or the molecular equation sometimes called is that it's easy to see it, it's easy to write it, it's easy to balance it. It gets a little harder to balance the ion because you have to look at each individual ion. Now, if we look at the ionic equation, uh, we can see that some things do not undergo any chemical change from the reactant side to the product side. The chromium ion is exactly the same on the product side as it is on the reactant side. The chloride ion is exactly the same on the product side as it is on the reactant side. So, if there's no rearrangement 
of the ions and a new substance isn't formed, those ions are called spectator ions. And spectator ions, again, are ions that do not change chemically from reactant side to product side. So everything I've circled here are called spectator ions. If we remove the spectator ions, what we have left is the barium-2 positive aqueous reacts with the sulfate ion aqueous and we form the precipitate barium sulfate solid. This equation is called the net ionic reaction. The net ionic reaction shows you the driving force of the reaction. It shows you the true chemical reaction that the barium ions that were in one test tube react with the sulfate ions in another test tube to form the precipitate, that's why it's a solid, uh, as a product here. So on the Chem 140 exam coming up and the quiz, you must be able to draw or choose the general ionic and net ionic equations. And you've seen this uh, on the assignment. So that's what brought this question up in class when I asked, was there any questions? A student had asked, how, what does this mean and how does it work? So in order to do these general ionic and anionic equations, you must memorize the solubility rules on page 139 in Table 4.1. All right. I hope this helps. That's why I developed this YouTube video for those of you um, if you haven't gotten to this or forgot to ask about it in class, you may want to watch this video before taking the quiz or the exam. Thank you.